In Java, it is often important to be able to create a list of objects so that we don't have to create a separate variable for each object that we want to track or do something with. Think about how difficult it would be to create our application if we needed to create new variables for each note the user created. Instead, in Java, we can use what is called a list to store a bunch of different objects of a class we specify. Lists in Java actually belong to a bigger concept called collections, but we aren't going to go into all the details of collections in this module. We're going to keep things simple and just focus on lists. When we declare a list in Java, we typically say what kind of items it can hold. It's possible to create a list that can hold any kind of item, but it's not quite as useful as being specific. For example, in the code you see here, you can see that I am declaring a list that holds strings. I do this by putting the type in angle brackets after declaring the type of the variable. To the right of the equal sign, you can see that I'm creating a new instance of that list type or a new object by saying new array list of type string. You might be a bit confused as to why I say list of type string for the variable type and array list of type string when I create a new instance of it. What's happening here is that I'm using an interface called list to declare the variable, but I'm using a class called ArrayList that implements or conforms to that list interface to actually create the object. It's not entirely important that you understand exactly how this works right now, but just know that in Java, we typically use lists like this, where we use the list interface to declare the variable, and we use an ArrayList or other class that implements list to create the actual list itself. The last thing you should probably know about lists in Java is that we can add or remove items from the list easily. Lists have a method on them called add and another method called remove that does exactly what you would think. You'll find that lists are something that you'll probably use very often in Java once you get used to using them. Now that we have our layout and we understand how lists work in Java and how lists work in Android, we have enough information to be able to go ahead and populate our list. And we're just going to populate this list with some dummy titles for now that will represent titles in our nodes later. Before we do this, let's go ahead and change the name of this list view because I don't like list view one. It's not very descriptive. We're just going to go into the XML. We're just going to change the name here to notes list view. And I'll just save this. And then we're going to go to our list notes activity. And just like we did in the other activity, we're going to write our code in this onCreate. This onCreate is actually the first method that gets called when our activity launches. So this gives us the ability to do something right when our activity starts. And what we want to do first is we want to get an instance or a reference to that list view control that we put in our layout so that we can populate it. We'll need to give that list view an adapter that will allow it to populate its list. In order to do that, we're just going to create a variable of type list view, and we'll call this notes list view. And then we'll set this equal to, and we'll do our cast to that list view type, and we'll do that find view by ID, and we have this r.id.notes list view. I'll put a semicolon at the end, and I'll hit control shift O to do the imports automatically. Now on our notes list view, we have a method. If we go to notes list view, and hit dot, we can call set adapter. And we need to specify an adapter to set for the list view. This will be the adapter that it'll use to populate the list. Well, right now we don't have an adapter. So I'm just gonna leave this code out. In fact, I'm gonna put a slash slash, which basically comments out this code. This means that this code won't be executed. It's just going to show up here and we're just gonna use this as a reference. When we're ready for this code, I'll go ahead and uncomment it out and then it'll work again. But for now, we'll leave this commented out and let's go ahead and create our adapter that we'll need in order to populate the list. We're going to use what's called an array adapter. So we're going to declare this by saying array adapter of type string. And we haven't discussed this yet, but remember how we said that when we create a list in Java, we do list of type string? Well, many other classes can be typed just like our list says what types it holds, this array adapter can say what types it holds as well. And this concept is called generics in Java. We're not going to go into the details of generics because it's a fairly complex subject, but when you need to use a class that uses a generic, you basically put the type that it should work on inside of these angle brackets when you declare it. 
Next, we'll go ahead and name our variable adapter, and then we'll set this equal to, and we'll do new array adapter of type string, and then we're going to pass into what's called a constructor. And this is a special method that we use to construct a new instance of our object. Remember, we have this array adapter class, and if we want an instance of it, we have to call a method in this case in order to set it up correctly with the right data. This constructor is going to take a few different pieces of data. The first thing that it needs is what's called a context, which is where is this being created? How is it going to be used? And it's going to be used in this activity, and we can use this keyword this to specify that this activity or the current class that we're in, that's what this means. The next parameter that we're going to pass in here is the layout that it's going to use for the rows that it creates in our list view. And there's a built-in one in Android, and we can access some of the built-in things in Android by doing android.r, and then we'll do layout. Dot, and you can see there's some selections here, and the one we want is simple underscore list item one. Now after that, what it needs is the actual field that it's going to populate in this layout. So if we were to look at this layout file, just like we've created our own layout files for screens, it has some controls in there, and those controls are named. And inside this layout, it has a control that displays some text. What we need to do is tell the adapter, when you populate this data, when you go ahead and create these rows, and we give you some titles for our notes, we want you to put that data in a particular control or a particular view that lives in this layout. And here's the name of it. In our case, the name is android.r dot id dot text one. The final thing that we need for our array adapter is the values or a list of strings that it's going to display. And we don't have these values yet. I'm going to go ahead and put the word values here, but this isn't going to work until we declare some values. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out this code as well, because we can't use this quite yet, because we need to create this list called values. Let's go ahead and create that list. We'll go ahead and do list of type string. We'll call it values. And then we'll do new array list of type string and semicolon. And I'll hit control shift O. And now you can see that this has imported the list and the array list from java.util namespace. Our list won't be very good if we don't have any data in it. Let's go ahead and create some values. These are just going to be the titles and we'll do values.add, and then we can add strings here. So let's just say first note, and then I'll just copy this. Two, three, four, five, we'll give it five notes, and we'll say second note, third note, fourth note, and fifth note. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment out this line because this should work. We have our values. We do need to import the array adapter type, so I'll hit Control shift o and now you can see that it's imported array adapter. Just to recap this real quick, what's going to happen is we're creating an adapter that's called adapter, that's the name of that variable. It's going to work on strings, and it's going to take in this layout, which is a built-in Android layout. It's going to put the values that we give for the layout into a control inside this layout called text1. And here are the values it's going to use, which is this list of strings that we specified. So now we have our adapter, and we can uncomment out this code. And let's put our semicolon at the end. And what this is going to do is it's going to take this notes list view that we created on our screen, and it's going to set the adapter to this adapter that we created. And by doing this, this list view is now going to know how to populate itself. It's going to use this adapter, which is going to say what the layout is and where to put the data in the layout, and it's going to display that in our screen. Let's go ahead and run this in our emulator and see what this looks like. So you can see our application came up. We don't have a lot of data in this list, but you can see that we have first note, second note, third note, fourth note, fifth note. And if we had more notes, it could fill up this list. And if there was too much to display on one screen, we would be able to scroll this list.